Hello. Hang on. <laughs> Is it? Hey, there yeah, I am. Yeah. Hey. Hi. <laughs> everyone. My name's Ryan Baker. I use he, him pronouns. I'm a filmmaker. I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put that as like a period. Yes. It's, uh, it's good to like finally meet you. I know we've talked like, at least, uh, <laughs> like Instagram and all that sort of stuff. I, I don't know what it doesn't, it doesn't feel like I'm meeting you. We technically have met before, but like, it. I'll tell you my first like memory of you ever oh, was. Oh, um, oh, oh. <laughs> no, it, it's so beautiful. It's um, it was at Charter, and like, there was like some pictures on the gallery, like like it was like a student show, and there's a photographer who took a photo of you, and you were like, "That's me. That's me on the wall. Do you see that with my hair?" And it, like, I just remember thinking like. <laughs> I love this person. Like this is like that's such good energy. So that's my first memory. Yeah, <laughs> I was probably in sixth grade. So <laughs> I wow, um, uh, you you got me quite embarrassed. I like do not remember that moment at all. <laughs> oh my gosh, no, it was a good moment. Like I really, I was like, that's a person I admire. Well, it, it all comes first full circle because I admire you quite <laughs> a lot now, and all 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 that you've done and all that. When did you get started? I, I mean, I was a theater kid, as everything about me kind of screams that, I feel like. Dance was, like, my first love. Um, I, I grew up doing ballet and love-hate relationship with that. Definitely internalized a lot of stuff, too. But uh, I think the good part about it was I, I loved choreography, specifically. And I think the way that I've become a filmmaker, like, has definitely... Um, it, my roots come through with that, with, with being a, a dancer, like the way I edit things, the way that I write, it, it feels like a dance. Being a filmmaker as a career, I did not choose that until like a few years ago, like 2017. Do you have any sort of like inspirations or inspirational like people that have had an effect on you? I would love to be my own version of Bob Fosse. Uh, <laughs> Because he, he started with dance and with being a dancer and then also a choreographer. And then he transitioned to film and then did both at the same time. And I see myself going that direction. But I think Mahershala Ali and Barry Jenkins, when Moonline came out, um, Mahershala Ali is an alum from my college. I went to St. Mary's College in the East Bay. Um, go Gales. Uh, <laughs> the 2017 Oscars. Um, that was my senior year of college. Right after the Oscars that April, like a month before I was graduating college, he vis he's visited our campus like a few times and done like speeches and stuff, but he did a screening of Moonlight and I was already obsessed with it. Like I, I loved that film so much. Um, but he did a, a Q and A with his old professor um, who taught like the theater classes and it still does. They did it at, um, in like the, the large theater that we have on campus. He, I forgot what the question was, but Mahershala, was saying something to the tune of like, I didn't start acting until I stepped foot on this stage, this very stage that we're talking. And that like cracked my little egg um, where I just was like, why did I think I was one old, two, that it's too late. And like, here's a person who has like, I have so many privileges that he never got access to that I have access to and I'm thinking I, I can never do it. It's just a limited belief that I was believing. Um, and so from there, I was like, oh, I want to be a filmmaker and I don't want to just like before my plan was working on a nonprofit and doing like media content, <laughs> which is not bad. That's not bad. But I was lying to myself that that's what I wanted, um, which like very much a parallel to being trans too of like, yes, I'm happy this way. I'm happy being a woman and doing this this is so fine i'm having so much fun and i look good. like 
it, it's that's fine it's for someone else. It just I'm not that someone else, you know. So I saw on your website that you had like poetry and I was reading some of it and it's like extremely personal, but inspiring at the same time. And like, oh, good. yeah, th that was just like, it was so sort of like hopeful. H had you written a lot of poetry before starting like this stuff or? You know, honestly, I really struggled with identifying as a writer. I didn't really claim it till this year. I, I haven't really written poetry until quarantine. Like, I, I think I dabbled in it a little bit. I was like, I wouldn't call myself a poet. But when I had a Twitter, one of the good parts I loved about Twitter was just, like, writing quick little poems. I forgot what I posted, but I was just like, hey, if you want, like this. If, like, you want me to write you, like, a little poem, you know, like, just a short poem because I'm trying to practice a little. And this is a great way. But that was, like, a one-time thing for, like, a week in 2018. And then... Then in like 2020, I was getting a lot of DMs from other black transgender people who needed mutual aid. And I was able to send some like occasionally, but I was like, I want to do a lot more because also this shouldn't be like, I hate that this is a real thing that has to happen. Um, and so I've seen like artists pull together like a raffle for their art. My art, like filmmaking doesn't really, it wouldn't really work like that very well, or it'd be very hard to and take a lot of time. And that would be taking time away from people that need the money. Um, so it's like, well, poems. And then I could make like a cool image with the poem on top of it. Like, so I, I kind of, they gave it a test run of like, would people buy this? Like if this was like, a, you got a $5 poem, like, would that be feasible? And people were interested. I had like three people who were consistently like needing mutual aid and like we've been talking before and had like like a, a friendship building. I, I just said, would you be okay if I created like some kind of fundraiser? Would that be cool? And they're like, yes, go for it. I got a lot of people wanting poems, which is great. Basically, I wrote personalized poems. So I would ask the people that paid me like, hey, what are questions you're asking yourself right now? Like, like kind of like bigger picture stuff. And some people were friends and acquaintances that I have like already had some rapport with. And so I was, I was like, I already know what I want to write you, you know? Um, but for some folks I didn't know very well, I just asked them these questions or like, even if I did know them very well, I would still ask it sometimes um, if I just needed some inspiration. I called it Bard Fundraiser because I literally was like, I feel like I'm just being a bard right now, just like a little poet in his little, little home. And so basically I piled it all together, divided this total amount by three and sent it out to the three folks. And then I just kept continuing to make the poems in the amount of time that I can. And honestly, even one of the poems that I wrote, it, that became the film I just made. I realized a lot of my poems they kind of feel like screenplays sometimes. Like they're very, I mean, writing in general definitely has visual elements that are like descriptive and you're supposed to see it in your head. Um, but I made one called The Base into a film that I, I just finished. I, I finished shooting it and editing it and like I wrote it, shot it and edited it within a span of like two months. I've been thinking a lot about um, racial passing and um, gender passing, I guess, in the context of patriarchy, like, not just like the parallels, but also how they're so different. And like, I hate the false equivalences that keep happening, especially um, like with like Caitlyn Jenner, and then Rachel Dolezal, like a lot of people will compare the two. And then it's like, bear in mind that Caitlyn Jenner isn't even the one. <laughs> like, <laughs> she's not even, <laughs> she's not she doesn't really claim us like that. And like, I think the one I, I've seen the, the film Disclosure, which I think has given grace to her. And like, even though I don't think that she necessarily deserves it or has certainly not given the grace and returned it back very well. So is that Disclosure movie like, is that good at all or is it? Oh, it's brilliant, literally. So okay. I think it's more important for cis people, especially cis people that have trans people in their families to watch it because this is what it is. Laverne Cox produced this film along with um, a bunch of trans filmmakers. Uh, and basically the idea behind it is that it is, it's like a T for T film. Like it's, it's a documentary and it's made by trans people for trans people dissecting 
the history of trans representation on film and television or any screen, to be honest, like any visual um, representation. I'm learning things too. Like it's, I, I think that's like the biggest thing that's so awesome is that it's not just like, here's the blocks for the baby cisgender person trying to understand like what all this is. It's also giving the trans audience tools to understand themselves too. Watch that film, but also like kind of brace yourself too because it's they do s dissect everything, like the the brilliant and also the incredibly harmful stuff. So like that that just just like bear in mind, like yeah. okay, I'm gonna be ready for that, but I need I need to get ready, like in order to watch it. But um, it's brilliant. Yeah, and they had a really cool fellowship program. Like before it came out. I actually sent this opportunity to my friend Nathan, who, um, shout out to Nathan Blue, um, he's my bestie. It was a fellowship program to like basically have an internship program, but not have it be like, oh, you're the little baby. It's like a fellowship program. You're like, you're our equal, but I know you're just entering, but you have a wealth of knowledge that is so worthy of being here, which <laughs> I love that. But my, my friend Nathan got to be a fellow on there. He was um, the hair and makeup, uh, fellow and he worked with like the mentors themselves were also trans people in the industry like teaching this to other transgender babies I mean not babies but like yeah <laughs> just like fresh people in the industry it's it's so yes I love disclosure that's Always. so awesome that's so awesome speaking of Nathan isn't he the one in um a place that is new he sure is uh yeah. so <laughs> We've known each other since we've been going by different names and different pronouns. Our transitions have very much paralleled each other. Like we kind of joke about it a little, but it also is very sweet and, and very comforting to have like like a, a brother accompany me during something that I'm new to. July, 2020, we were like, I need to make something and I'm dying to. And so was Nathan. And he said, I literally had a vision of me and just, it's just my chest. And um, like, so, like giving love to my top surgery scars, but also like, I want to paint this gold triangle in front. There's some moods and some feelings I need to express, but I think that this film is meant to be made on the fly. Like it's meant to be discovered even on the day of production, you know, like it's, and we're supposed to just play and have fun. And it was exactly that, it was so much fun. Um, basically what we did, so we did the painted thing, right? And he had a poem already written, um, but he did, like none of that was even for sure. It just was like in the middle of editing, we're like, oh, here's a poem. Yeah, it was very organic and easy and sweet. And just we just like wore masks and like we were still terrified, even though like it was just the two of us. We were just wearing masks. And like I, I was like, I had to isolate for like a long time. I'm like, I just remember we were both so scared, but we were like, we got it. Like, it's just we have to try. Basically, we ended up just, it was like this dance and um, it's getting over our fears of being seen, like literally seen with our bodies. Nathan wasn't on tea yet and I was like four months in on tea and it was, it's so sweet to look back at like these like behind the scene moments. I will say about a place that is new, I don't know how both of y'all like packed so much impact into like, like two minutes. I was like watching it a little bit before like this interview. There was one, one, well, I mean, besides everything about it, but it was like the moment it hit the, where we belong is somewhere we already know. And like everything that was like on the screen and in that moment, and I was just like, okay, I gotta, <laughs> <laughs> I gotta calm down. <laughs> Nathan wrote the poem. Mm -hmm. um, I I was one speaking on it and it's so funny hearing back I was I remember thinking my voice is so deep now and like now I look back on that I'm like that was pipsqueak me that was so deep. <laughs> but it, like all of it is you know it, it was deep for me at the time because I had never been that deep before but um but anyway like Nathan wrote that and it's an incredible poem and um that that honestly all of it was just this natural flow that just ended up happening we had like these little mini moments too. And like, I ended up interviewing him for an hour too. We thought that would be the film, but, and then it turns out it was just like, there's like five different films within the footage that we shot. So a place that is new is just one version. 
until it is certain as the moon and the sun, I will be the place where I belong. And I saw you there. I saw everyone. There's a museum in Canada, randomly enough, um, I, in a small town called Salmon Arm, like salmon like the fish, and then arm like the appendage. They are connected with Nathan, like a family knows, like someone in Nathan's family knows this gallery. And they showed a place that is new. And they said the sweetest things about that film and have shared really great great stories about what people have taken from it when it was in the gallery space like grandparents were coming out to the grandchildren like for the first time like either as as queer or even as non-binary we belong because we are here today i ask what happened to make us think we didn't i saw like you like worked on like the matrix four and like all this like wild wild stuff (laughs) Uh, I get very shy talking about my experience on like bigger budget stuff because I think I I get hypercritical of myself where it's like, oh, are you just like some narcissist so you don't know it? Like, are you bragging right now? Like, like, and it all all that is just learned stuff that I'm gonna probably know the origin of soon at some point we'll get to another layer of therapy later but yes i will talk about it matrix four it felt like really cosmic to me i think that's like if i had to sum up the word for that experience um basically this was like early 2020 uh february 2020 like the whole month of february in san francisco they're filming matrix four and I had heard rumors that that was going to happen, but I was like, I have no idea how to get on that set. And like, maybe I won't, that's okay. But literally the opportunity, it just, I was ready to take it and it landed in my lap. Like, I really think that there was something in my brain that went, like, give me the opportunity. And like, I was just like ready to receive it. Um, I got an email about uh, Local 16 is uh, the IHC, like, that's the one in, in the Bay Area called Local 16. And they were having an internship opportunity. And that does not happen. Like, it's not even like a rare thing to get it. It's like, that's not even the thing that happens, you know? Um, and there's some reasoning behind that that isn't so good. And there's some reasoning that does make sense of like, people have to be qualified and like operate equipment that could kill you, you know? Like, like if something, if you don't know how to use it properly, right? Um, but it's the question is who gets to learn how to do it and who gets to go on set and learn how to do it, who gets trusted more, you know, that's like where the systematic problems come in. In order for Matrix 4 to be filmed in San Francisco, they had to have a permit which goes through City Hall and the City Hall's agreement was like, you can film here, we have to have a certain percentage of people, the uh, local San Francisco Bay Area film production people through Local 16 and also that union has to have an internship opportunity. I got on set and it was, it was so much fun, but I had a bit of culture shock because film production is hard in general and, and people have to work very hard to get to where they're at, especially if they are members of a union. Like there's, there's all this is being said with love and respect and understanding. Um, but it, I have ne- I told myself the first day, I was like, I don't think I've been in a room with this many white cis men, cis het men ever. I don't know how to act right now. Like I'm a little scared. <laughs> and I was like, you know what? It's okay. We're, I'm here for me. I'm going to find the people that will find me. And I did, you know? Um, and also a big thing about this too was like, I was going to start testosterone that month and I put it on hold because I didn't have enough time to like to schedule it with like the nurse like for your first injection you want to do it with the nurse and have it be like a reverent time and like I just was like I don't even know where to start with this this is all this is a lot but it's I just know it's not now and also in hindsight I'm glad I waited because especially your first month you want to be able to give time to pay attention to what your body is doing and how it's changing and I think the intention of starting HRT is such a like it's huge and it's like a baptism into your new life you know there are many moments in production where I was like I wish I had tea right now you know and also even though I didn't pass as like a a man what other people were seeing they thought there's like this little vaguely gay woman (laughs) 
<laughs> but they were seeing this woman work G and E, uh, grip and electric, like this. Or well, I was just doing grip actually for this production. But um, grip, the grip department is a very hyper masculine, very white like uh, department, and and a lot of the issues with film, like in terms of like the racism, homophobia, that's everywhere because that is the 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 system that we are operating under. But the more overt examples of it can come from the grip department. It meant a lot to people to see me doing that work. And I, once I realized that, I was like, even if they're not seeing me the way I want to be seen, maybe it was meant for me to be seen that way in this moment. I did meet Lana Wachowski at the rap party, which was really cool. I was so drunk. Like, I was like, <laughs> I. I was, everybody was, because that's like, we are working too many hours. Like, I mean, sometimes it was even 16 hour days. Everybody's exhausted after this month. Everybody gets hammered. I was dying to meet with like Lana Wachowski and tell her, I'm a transgender man on the set and I'm, blah, 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 blah. I'm so excited. Also, I'm starting testosterone tomorrow. <laughs> Can I get a picture with you? <laughs> I literally said that to her and we were both laughing and she was like, sure. And like, she, we took a photo and it was, it was cute. And she's like, woo. And I'm like, ah. and <laughs> it was very much like a very sweet moment. But um, basically that's how I, I learned a lot about myself. I learned a lot about the industry and I'm thankful to have had that last bit of like pre COVID, like, like what was film production like before COVID? Because now it's different, not even just with the process, but the way people are thinking about the world is different. So production is different. The stories are different. You know, I got to see the last bit of like crumminess, you know, or like that, the things that weren't working, you know, but there are plenty of things that were working, working and that were amazing. And I've, I've met incredible people on that set that took me under their wing and taught me a lot, but didn't, didn't think of me as like, a child you know like like they were just like i i i'm so glad you're here like i'm glad that it's changing you know honestly knowing that the director was a, an out transgender woman like it gave me some gumption to be like even if like the grips or anybody was misgendering i was like no i'm a guy he him please you know or at least just call me ryan you know that was so powerful to me and um i hope for a day that it doesn't take like somebody's occupation or their access to um like what like the fact that they do something to earn worthiness you know like it shouldn't take lana wachowski being the director being our boss to be like the reason you respect me i should not be a rare thing i have so much fucking privilege like i'm not the end of this at all and i don't want it to be i don't believe in one person to fix it all or like one type of demographic like i don't want to be the only person that's trans I want to see the least protected of us thriving and making their dreams come true. You know, that shouldn't be a rare thing at all. Um, but right now it is, but it won't be for long. I don't think so. I know that we can make the tough decision, even though it's the right one, because we've lived that. Like we literally chose the harder, and only decision to survive. From every corner, it's literally like change or die, evolve or die. And trans people are like, did someone say evolve? <laughs> like I did wow. three years ago. <laughs>